Well, there was a lot of stuff going on yesterday. There was President Biden's State of the Union address, and there was also primary races taking place in the state of Texas, because believe it or not, it is already an election year. Once again, I don't think that I fully recovered from 2020, but nonetheless, we're doing it again. So overall, um, we're going to talk about the election result. And I've got to say, just off the bat, not a bad night for the left. I mean, I didn't get all of the wins that I wanted when it comes to progressive candidates that I was following. But overall, I mean, it wasn't the bloodbath that we've come to expect with leftist congressional candidates. We had some really solid victories and one guarantee of a leftist who will be going to Congress. And that's really exciting. Um, you know, so overall, not too shabby compared to, um, you know, other primary nights that we've all experienced before as leftists, which have been painful. But let's look at the results, starting with the gubernatorial race. So it looks like Beto O'Rourke handily defeated all of his primary opponents, so he will ultimately be the Democrat that will lose against Governor Greg Abbott come November. Here's hoping to him going away forever after that. Now, when it comes to the House races that I was following closely, there was a progressive candidate in the 30th Congressional District of Texas. Her name was Jessica Mason. And she was a phenomenal candidate. I was rooting for her, but this was a really tough race because this was a crowded field. Unfortunately, she did not win. Looking at the results here, she came in eighth place. So hopefully she will choose to run again in the future when the field isn't as crowded. Hopefully she'll boost her name recognition in the meanwhile. Really disappointing result here. She was a great candidate, um, so I, I look forward to following her and what she chooses to do next. Now when it comes to the 37th Congressional District of Texas, I was rooting for Donna Imam. She's a longtime friend of the show. She nearly won her seat and made it to Congress in 2020. This time, didn't come close, unfortunately. So she was facing off against incumbent Lloyd Doggett, and he won with 79.2% of the vote, with 92% of precincts reporting. Donna Imam only received 17.8% of the vote, which is very disappointing to say the least, considering how close she came before. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. And um, this one is just really disappointing because Donna Imam is brilliant. She is a strong, solid progressive. She's an engineer, so she's brilliant. So having her in Congress would have been incredibly valuable, but unfortunately didn't happen this time. You know, the districts were redrawn. So I thought that she actually had a better shot of winning this time than in 2020 when she you know, defeated her primary opponents and faced off against the Republican. But um, that wasn't the case. So I will still be following Donna Imam and hope that in the future she chooses to run again. And, you know, I have no doubt that she will continue to fight. Um, now, with that aside, there, there's other leftists that were running, but those were the two that I was really watching closely. But now let's get to the good news, starting with the kind of mixed slash good news. Um, I know you all were paying attention to the race between Jessica Cisneros and Henry Cuellar. Henry Cuellar is under investigation by the FBI, so this should be a no-brainer. She should have easily beat him. Now, I was watching the results roll in, and there was 15, 20% of the results, and she had 70% of the vote. So I thought, okay, this is looking really good so far. The preliminary results are giving me a little bit of hopium. As the night went on, her numbers went down and down and down. And then it seemed like, okay, her just winning outright, getting more than 50% and not having to compete in a runoff against Henry Cuellar, that's diminishing. But here's where we're at currently. Neither managed to pull the 50% needed to win outright, so they'll both be going to a runoff. He has a 1.7% lead over her with 95% of precincts reporting. And I I've just got to say, you know, I have long stopped hoping that Democratic Party primary voters will do the smart or even the logical thing. But when you have this district that looks to be more and more like a swing district, voting for someone who's under investigation for the FBI is a really galaxy-brained thing to do. Um, so what are you thinking? What are you thinking if you voted for Henry Cuellar? Are you stupid? Now, to be fair to the voters in this particular district, I'm assuming that they just didn't know. But it's really frustrating to me that Democratic Party primary voters just instinctively always vote incumbent, incumbent, incumbent because reasons, right? Maybe they think that the incumbent defeated a Republican before, therefore they're the best to go up against the Republican again. But you can't keep complaining about the state of the country if you keep electing the same fucking corporate Democrats over and over and over again. So it is very frustrating to me that this was even close. It should have been a blowout. But nonetheless, 
I don't want to rain on everyone's parade because she's not out of it yet. The problem is that, you know, either she is going to boost her name recognition between now and the runoff election, or people will kind of forget about the fact that he's under FBI investigation. Remember, Jessica Cisneros is a grassroots-funded candidate, so she does not have a lot of money to send out mailers and do TV advertisements blasting the fact to constituents in this district that he is under investigation by the FBI. A Republican, however, who is funded by corporate America, is going to be able to do that. So it looks as if if Henry Cuellar pulls this off, that seat is going to go to a Republican. So voters in this district, they basically have the choice between electing a progressive or voting for a corporate Democrat who will almost certainly lose to a Republican. And again, I don't have much faith in Democratic Party primary voters because they just love voting for dinosaurs over and over again who are corrupt and corporatist. So who knows? I really hope that Jessica Cisneros pulls this off. But I mean, it's not it's not a foregone conclusion yet. And I don't want to be too much of a doomer, but this shouldn't have even been close. But yet he overtook her and had a 1.7% lead. So I'm rooting for her. If she loses, then voters in this district, I mean, I don't like to voter blame very frequently, but I don't know what else to say. You're just dumb if you're voting for someone who's under investigation by the FBI. And if you didn't know that, maybe do a quick Google search before you vote. I mean, Jesus Christ, people. This is our democracy we're talking about. Five minutes to just do a quick search on Henry Cuellar. That can make a huge difference. So Jesus Christ, do your due diligence for once, Democratic Party primary voters. But putting aside all of that, the really good news came when uh, we looked at the results from the 35th Congressional District of Texas, where strong progressive Greg Cesar, endorsed by AOC and other progressives, won in a landslide with 61.2% of the vote and 95% of precincts reporting at the time that I record this video. Now, according to Cook, this is a D20 plus district. I believe it's D21 to be exact. So he is almost certainly going to get elected and go to Congress. Really good news. So we have another solid progressive, almost certainly going in Congress, being another vote for the left. And that's really important. He supports Medicare for all and all of the progressive priorities that we care about, whether or not, you know, he agrees with us on strategy that's yet to be seen, but at least to have him there advocating for our positions, that is really, really important. So I'm excited about this. I think that he's a phenomenal candidate. He's one that I, I didn't follow too closely, but I was aware of. And it's really nice to see him not just win, but win in a landslide. Like we needed that win. We need victories like this. And I'm really glad whatever he did here, I hope that he shares his winning strategy with other candidates across the country. But this was really important to see. Now, if you haven't heard of him yet, let me go ahead and share his ad that he was running. Um, overall great candidate. The victories that mean the most are fought for together. No one thought that a group of workers and community advocates could take on the biggest corporations in Texas that a young organizer could win a seat on the city council, or that our big dreams and bold ideas could turn into transformational policies. But we fought and we won so that everyday people could have a seat at the decision-making table, so that workers could make a living wage, so families could afford to stay in their home and reproductive rights could be protected. Together, we've made real progressive change in Texas, but our biggest challenges are still ahead. Right-wing officials who don't care if we freeze or get sick or if we're discriminated against. They only cater to the powerful. They think we can't win. They are wrong. I'm Greg Casar, and I believe that working families from Bayer to Hayes to Comal to Travis County deserve a progressive leader who will always fight and deliver for reproductive rights, good jobs, Medicare for all, and a better Texas. That's why I'm running for Congress, because this is our fight, our future. So there you have it. Greg Cesar going to Congress almost certainly. So really important. We, we could have Jessica Cisneros also go to Congress. She'll be facing off in a run air, uh, runoff against Henry Cuellar. So we'll have to wait and see. But again, I just want to say I don't want to be too doomer here. Overall, this was a pretty damn good night for the left. Usually we get 
zero W's, right? But we have potentially two, depending on how well Jessica Cisneros does in, I believe, May when the runoff takes place. But we have almost one guaranteed win in November with Greg Cesar, and we have another potential winner in Jessica Cisneros. It's kind of a more difficult district to win against the Republican, even if there is a Democratic incumbent there currently. So we'll have to wait and see. But overall, not too bad. You know, I've kind of expected zero wins in all of these races over the years after seeing so many elections. But to have one, possibly two, look, that's good. That's a victory that I think we need to celebrate. I'll take it.